white screen the rising flame logo on top below black colored text appearing in the middle of the screen as if being typed says rising flame presents hashtag dil will pyar vyar a discussion on love intimacy and disability nidhi goyal founder and executive director of rising flame in conversation with shweta mantri comedian and author of one of the essays featured in our campaign dil will pyar vyar photos of both the speakers on the screen recording of our facebook live from 5th march 2021 as for this facebook live i am nidhi goyal i am the founder and executive director of rising flame and this is a campaign that we launched last year um to just focus on love desire disability gender intimacy and what that looks like when all of these come together what does a month of february which is generally you know looked at as the month of love the month of hearts and roses and valentines day what does that even look like so last year we launched this campaign on 14th of february in collaboration with love matters um and this year we are back again with several pieces written pieces um which are personal narratives by women with disabilities themselves uh this year we have four narratives which are published on love matters and uh, they speak about different forms of love they speak about different experiences of love they speak about the beauty of finding love the emotion of losing love the intimacy that they experience or they want to experience the desire that they hold deep in their hearts uh very fortunate to have this conversation today um in line with the campaign there will be our as one of the authors on the campaign who wrote last year and wrote this year as well for us um shweta mantri the stand up comedian and our icon lead fellow uh from rising flames national leadership program for women with disabilities shweta welcome to this facebook live and i'm so 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 happy and fortunate to be in conversation with you today thank you so much for having me I'm just delighted to be associated with all of you and with rising flame and i think every time we interact it's a ball so <laughs> and it's a party so i'm just looking forward to have some fun online right now and uh, tease you as well yes right that that's our mutual goal i think so <laughs> <laughs> as co-authors on this um, uh, campaign not co-authors but authors who written this year for this campaign uh two of the out of the four na- narratives are by shweta and myself and um our team member shimali raghavan raghavan and another fantastic woman with a disability from our i can read program deepa um these four narratives have been very beautifully put together this year they speak about the struggles they speak about the joy they speak about ah wish life was like hollywood <laughs> <laughs> but shweta for me uh it's been very interesting because i um as a part of a team and as a woman with a disability myself as an activist as, you know with which i have a lens as a fellow comedian mm-hmm. i looked at your article last year and i looked at your article this year now so yeah I, Kamal ki journey thi Kamal ki journey. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say me. that, and I wanted to be like, ah, oh, that's so you know the 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 change in the tone in the experience has been so tremendous. Um, do you want to tell us what shifted between this year? Uh, I I lost your uh, la- a voice in the last eight sentence. Yeah, I'm saying, do you want to tell us what shifted in this year? One year. Ah, shift right. Um. So last year I think my article was about uh, uh just uh, being saturated and frustrated with all the uh, dating experiences or the lack of dating experiences that I was uh, having uh, online and offline I think I think I spoke mostly about uh, dating uh, online last year and uh, I spoke about the men being weird uh, which they are uh, no doubt but uh, when men being weird <laughs> with regards to disability and not knowing how to handle or talk to a woman with a disability and uh, yeah just like uh, some dates turning into horror stories and then not knowing whether uh, for how long i have to wait to sort of experience uh, something that's uh, that will make me feel like a regular woman you know of sorts and uh, cut to today or like 2020 
cut to like a few months later uh, i i experienced something and i, I wrote about it this year uh, i was getting someone for a, a brief period of time and uh, it was completely unexpected and yeah it uh, it was love of a different kind because uh, it made me fall in fall in love with myself uh, i i think uh, no matter how much we talk about self love you know uh, we're all human beings and at the end of the day we do crave uh, validation from the opposite gender and i think when that happened with me um just things just uh, got better you know it this might sound cliche but but uh, there's no no denying that uh, i i am a woman who has uh, the same needs as as any other woman uh, in terms of being loved and accepted for who i am so yeah i had an experience and i i wrote over the thought about it um, the the relationship or the uh, equation didn't last for long but uh, no grudges held because uh, it just taught me so much about myself and about being with somebody uh, and also about being vulnerable because uh, i shared things with somebody that i hadn't shared before with regards to uh, my emotions or my physical health and my uh, quote unquote limitations right so it was a kind of a life changing experience for me uh, one year back i i couldn't have told someone that you know hey oh my god look at me i'm hot but today i have the confidence to like listen i am hot you better compliment me uh, uh, that's so, yeah. a call for yeah yes that's like, yeah, a, i have a i'm speaking to a hoty please um all those who are single and she has expressed um yeah expressed you're also wish a hoty but you're wish for a, <laughs> can we not go to that part straight can we like just have some fun before <laughs> you know, so also shweta you brought up so many things uh, first when you said um, you know till then i had you know men were weird and i was like what change shweta i don't think that will change <laughs> Oh uh, yes, yes, not completely. Yes, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I do want to say you know some of the things that you said about validation, right? Mm. Um, around external validation, around what scripts tell us being you know a real woman uh, would look like, right? Mm. Um, what happens when you're um, heterosexual and you're surrounded by these very very fulfilling heterosexual men uh, right yeah, yeah. constantly you're like oh this is how it's supposed to be otherwise you're not you're not a woman you're not lovable you're not x mm. you're not y and so that really brings about so much of self doubt in one's um whole behavior approach um and all of that so we'll come to the doubt bit you know in we'll we'll come and yeah. and will it to our conversation but also very important uh, that you said that when you went to do a you know entered this relationship in the last one year old when you briefly dated this person um it was also to learn how to be vulnerable right yeah. and yeah. what does that look like because i know <laughs> it's amazing because when you're disabled hmm. the only way to show that you're not um you know that you're not not disabled but you're there right like you're like everybody else is to not show your vulnerability i, I can't tell you how many women with disabilities how many people with disabilities are spoken to and they said this is the, my disability doesn't change anything in my life i can do everything like you do and i'm like but i couldn't do everything that you <laughs> can do right like there are no two non disabled people who could do everything that the other person does right yeah, so yeah. but this pressure of i am just like you like you know i shouldn't show my vulnerability because the other person will judge you mm-hmm. is that you like you mm. um i i i have been that person in the past when i'm like oh my god i'm like anybody else and uh, oh my god i can do everything that the other other girls can do ah uh-huh. sometimes you cut the stigma we say that like ha ha chal chup be like i mean <laughs> even like uh, without being aware of the stigma just like because you want you want to fit in There's so much pressure because you've been told all your life that oh my god you're different oh my god you you can't get xyz things in your life or oh my god you shouldn't be ex- expecting something and then when you finally have a chance at something you just go all out there over compensate and like oh my god i'm here i can do this i will do anything for you i will walk without crutches for you uh, you know stuff like that i couldn't uh, say that i'd be like love let a boot na to email pe boot pa wale like <laughs> like I'm uh-huh. blind. If you don't know that, it's I. I really don't understand what the disability is. Sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, I once climbed four floors, four floors of somebody, but without a crutch. 
Oh no, with crutches. I was like, I'm sorry. What are these superpowers? <laughs> uh, Divyang, you know, I am divine in being with superpowers. Okay, fine. Uh, but like, you climbed four floors to prove that you could climb floors if they stayed. Like if there was some issue. Is to that prove that, that I I can be a part of someone's uh, regular life. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, fine. Like sorry, I can I'm do regular trying, things. I'm not trying yeah. to laugh. I'm just trying to say. No, no. Like I mean, we've all pressures. been there. Yes. Yeah, these are real but like I painted when I was losing sight because I had this massive crush on someone and I wanted to give him handmade stuff because he huh. didn't he didn't like bought um bought things so he would uh-huh. like someone spending money on him so I actually mm-hmm. would take my friend's help and make handicrafts and paint and write with my pen with like a paint inside so which oh. is really painful but I did it. Like, never know me, never. Never know me. Never. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, you were telling us how, how, yeah. Then how, how did that process? The thing with uh, this person is that uh, he was also vulnerable. Spoke about certain uh, mental health issues that he was experiencing, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, and and I think during the very first few conversations, we spoke about uh, which which and I, know I wasn't expecting this, but we spoke about the impact of conditioning on the perception of of uh, disability. You know, yeah. and and how conditioning just kind of ruins everything. And I'm like, whoa, this person is talking my language. They're using the Walter I use every day. You know, okay. uh, so I think that kind of hit it off. And uh, this person was open uh, about uh, his where he is uh, mentally, emotionally, mm-hmm. and also asked questions about my condition and and uh, just the way things have been for me. Within, within, uh, intention of wanting to learn, you know, about things. So that made it very, very comfortable, uh, for us. I think early on, just uh, also like from the get go, you know, um, I mean, I've, 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 I've always gotten that. So on, on Tinder or or anywhere, I don't mention that I'm a stand up comic because men get intimidated. Oh my God, she'll use me as content. Of course, I'll use you as content. Why <laughs> else do you think I'm there? Uh, but so I hadn't mentioned that. And then like everybody else, he was like, oh my God, you're so funny in your conversations. But then he also, uh, and uh, it's, it had just been one year to me you uh, putting a display picture with my crutches. Until then, I hadn't disclosed my, my disability <coughs> online. Okay. So the fact that he could see me in crutches and still call me beautiful, even without, I mean, any flirting or just, just to sort of, give a genuine compliment, you know, I think that meant something to me. And, and when that happened uh, on a regular basis, and then when that when I got to know that it came from a good place, I think that's when I started taking him seriously, maybe a little. So at least you knew that he wasn't a jerk because he was not like, oh, so cute, you're in crutches, but still beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. At least uh, that wasn't the case. So. Yeah, and uh, to be honest, he was uh, he was being very cautious. Oh my God, what do I say? What tone do I use? And I'm glad we kind of got over that conversation early on. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the first time we met, he did call me a rock star. That's what and, I'm saying. I, I'm yeah. sure you were hard on him. <laughs> sure. So I'm sure you were like not... He was like, oh, should I say this? I called him a rock star like, um, and I was like, shut down. I, I went uh, full, what do you say, panelist behavior on him. I'm like, listen, when you say rock star, this is what you're implying. This is what you put, this is how I perceive it. This is what you mean. You're putting me on a pedestal. So we need equity. So don't put it. And yeah, he, he stayed. He stayed after that. He, didn't he attended leave. your entire panel and then he said, yeah, this panelist yeah. is interesting. Can I have yeah, some one on one sessions? Exactly. <laughs> so he's like, no, he's like okay, it's... I'm sorry. And uh, it, it, it didn't happen again. So I, I was very impressed. I'm like, good. You're a, you're a quick learner. I'm happy with you. So that helps in many places in a relationship. But anyway, <laughs> just keeping this conversation clean. Uh, trying to say that it just puts so much pressure, right? Yeah. Um, mm. we, because we've been bullied had so many stereotypes and stigmas put on us perceptions are so weird and then all these words of like hero rock star special um different that if someone really genuinely loves you right and someone's like oh my god my special someone and i heard some disabled person say but i i'm I'm like anyone else i'm not special i'm like i'm sorry but i am someone special someone right like i 
I want to be that because it's mm-hmm. not about my disability. I'm, spe- you know, when when my partner calls me his special someone, mm-hmm. it's not because I'm disabled. It's because but they want to call me special yeah. in a love intimacy space. I, yes. And it's it's it takes so much to come to delineate all of these things, right? First, when yeah. people call you special with a, you know, to stereotype you yeah. or, or different to stereotype, yeah, unique right. to stereotype you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you go the other side saying, don't call me this. And then you come back to say, but why shouldn't I have these regular experiences? You know, just because right. I have to prove to the world that he's not calling me special because yeah. I'm disabled, right? And yeah. that's that's a, that's a the journey that one has to make. And I still remember um, mm. my friend who's now I'm dating who's my fiance and who's going to be my husband is basically <laughs> I, I I remember uh, we just met for dinner when we were just friends right we just met for dinner and we reached this restaurant very nice restaurant and he so I was walking holding his hand to the right mm. and uh, then I once you put my hand on the back of the chair I'm sorted right I'm like ah, now I'll sit down uh. and I realized suddenly that he's pulling the chair for me yeah okay and i was so sharp i was like listen i can do it i can take it from here <laughs> <laughs> he calmly sat down he said what do you think i did i mean why are you upset he said no no you don't have to assist me for all this he's like but i wasn't assisting you uh, yeah, I was oh just yes i'm yeah. just being nice <laughs> i was uh, pulling yeah. your chair and i was uh, like hmm oh such things also happen <laughs> so i think you know, we get yeah, yeah. in the whole effort of moving away Even, from stereotype. We go in such a zone yes, where yes. you're like, oh, I'm the strong, independent woman. Don't pick me up. Don't drop me back. Oh, don't, that, do that. This. Yeah. don't do that. But, you know, sometimes people are just doing that out of love. And yeah. in this whole effort of being this super independent, disabled woman, um, and each word is important, um okay, we yeah. just want to move away and not have certain experiences and that i unlearned in this relationship so it was so important when you said that being vulnerable was a part of it and mm. um you know heroism <laughs> being vulnerable somewhere to act in so many yeah. ways um this whole imagery of heroism mm-hmm. um sure okay yes sorry you're saying something no, no i was just uh i was just wondering that uh uh, we both had experiences last year, but uh, your experience is going to last a, lot, uh, a, a lifetime, right? right. So uh, yes, uh, it's uh, you know yours is like of course it's I mean it's <laughs> but, and I'm like what can I say? Do I be a realist right now or do I be Bollywood right <laughs> now? No, no, be Bollywood. It's fun. It's called Dil Dil Pyar. We are we named it like a Bollywood campaign. Didi, we are one time winning, one time not winning. प्यार मतलब <laughs> वो बन जाएंगे फिर हमारी शादी हो जाएगी सो ऑल ऑफ दैट सो वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फॉर मी लाइक यू वर फ्रेंड्स फॉर 8 इयर्स एंड एंड देन दिस काइंड ऑफ बिगन फॉर यू सो आई जस्ट वांट टू नो लाइक दिस जनरल आउट ऑफ क्यूरियोसिटी um हाउ इज इट इन द सेंस यू यू मे हैव डिस्कस्ड योर पास्ट फ्लेम्स विद हिम एज अ फ्रेंड आई आई डोंट नो सो हाउ इज इट विद दैट एंड जस्ट वेयर आर यू वेयर आर यू राइट नाउ विद रिगार्ड्स टू योर comfort level and 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 your mind space um mm. i think it's very interesting because the more prag- I, i always prided myself on being a pragmatist okay oh. i also thought i could plan everything in life <laughs> which, oh. of course which covid slapped me in my face saying ha ha sit down with your plan <laughs> and pragmatist saying listen like you know by this age uh, i give myself this much time if i find someone i find someone otherwise mm. you know i feel really happy or contented right now mm. um and it's cool right and i also had many other pragmatist ideas saying aisa yeah. thodi hota hai you don't one day fall in love you don't one day suddenly find someone mm-hmm. uh so i was i i this is how you know sort of life slaps you in your face <laughs> when you are too strong about things but uh 
but it's Did a beautiful slap. Did you know that you were falling so. in love with him? Or no, I don't it? think so. I think oh. we had a, a tremendous ah. level of uh, closeness and friendship mm, okay. and respect for each other. Mm-hmm. And I think he was the only friend who actually knows all my boundaries. He always knew all my boundaries. You know, we were comfortable uh, being vulnerable. So a lot of the relationship dating pieces we sk- skipped right over because we thought that that would happen as fast, <laughs> right? Um, so we knew our you know our hopes our dreams our dreams that didn't come true um you know instances in life where we felt like shit mm. um and mistakes that we made um in personal and professional lives uh the guilt that th- that brought in the shame that that brought in the di- the struggles that we had right and i think all of that uh put together was made the transition so easy right but when i say made the transition so easy when we actually finally ट्रेलेटेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्टेस्ट
university we hardly attended events together he was not okay. that active so hmm. it's not like we were friends even from the disability community we were just friends right right so it's also okay. been very interesting or or it becomes very interesting so because i'm 35 i'm an activist and a community <laughs> people don't come up to me and ask questions <laughs> I because I'm like, this is an interesting question. Goes in my next set. Uh, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Noted. And now, so I have to make a fresh set. You no, know, half my set was about being single. <laughs> wow. I think I'm going to go back to your videos and take some. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's interesting no. about yeah. how people want a logic when you're a woman with a disability, when you're a non-disabled hmm. woman. Hmm. There doesn't have to be a logic to getting in a relationship. It's it's considered inevitable. right mm, it's yeah. considered your duty almost it's considered social pressure so you have a pressure on the other side right that you have to have mm. whatever shaadi bachcha whatever right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and yeah. when you're a disabled woman ha ah, it has to have a logical framework of why you oh, why reaches. you want to exactly so why i, re- want, I remember me. telling somebody again in my family that uh, at 25 So my best friend from school got married at at twenty five, mm-hmm. and I remember getting back from a wedding, and then finally confronting some people in my family that hey, I think it's time you guys start looking at me. <laughs> and uh, kid you not, their response is, "Are you mad?" And it, which in which in Hindi the exact words are, "Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Are you crazy?" Literally, and I'm like, like it was uh, I I was uh, appalled because I'm like, is that how you look at me that uh, as someone who won't think of getting married like i mean and and why because i've never been somebody uh, who has labeled myself or has put myself into a box i've always been open about what i what i want in life and when i got that kind of a response uh, i was completely speechless i didn't know and i'm like i have to convince you yeah exactly like why do you have to convince people that we need to be in a relationship yeah, and and i think i'm sorry i just finished saying this i think it is what is this entire strong 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 narrative nahi hai yaar strong we need partnerships we need companionships we need friendships we need com- we need a community you know i just i i i literally i'm on the verge of taking my crutch and hitting someone when, when they call me strong for no reason yeah that's a demonstration of you being strong no <laughs> 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 sorry <laughs> no but it's yeah this thing because they not only want to have a rash that they want to first justify why do you need a partner Okay, right. so the minute you say you need a partner because you're needy, man, <laughs> you desire. Okay, that is still not acceptable only because women can't desire in this country. Like you can't handle that. You can't. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's only Sheila Di Giovanni when it happens. Men should rule, right? And it's only Katrina Kaif because she's attractive. Correct, and correct. Not- and men should rule. Not even women are also not allowed to rule. Also, only men should rule. Yeah. And that's only allowed, right? Mm-hmm. So it's also right. that first. Why do you have a desire? the second thing is about this whole framework of now who there must be some reason so because you need help hmm, okay hmm, hmm. and the third will generally be acha now you found someone why this person is with you right? ah what it's are not, they getting out of you because ah, so it's not happened yeah. to me uh, like i said i'm 35 and activist hmm. in community and people are quite worried oh, okay so it's not happened to me but hmm. it's generally what happens right it's yeah. generally what happens and it happens behind your back if you're not strong enough to tell you your face yeah. um they talk behind the back they're curious about who's this guy mm. oh are they typical do they earn mm. are they settled what are they getting earn? money from the in-laws which ever right. right like multiple yeah. the whole approach so there's one way of saying you know when you find a partner who oh, tell me more about it right uh-huh. and when a disabled person finds a partner or disabled woman finds Hmm. It's like ah, अच्छा अच्छा. Who's he? What does he do? What does he do? अच्छा अच्छा. Oh, कितना अच्छा होगा दिल का ना और ये so cute, so nice. Oh, that'll be God bless him. Ah, God bless. Like God bless. होगा अच्छा दिल का तभी मैंने ढूंढा है but तुमको क्या जरूरत है? नहीं नहीं दिल का अच्छा इसलिए उसने तो मैं ढूंढा है. Oh, I think like unfortunately that's what has what I've heard uh, so hmm. far. But yeah. it's also interesting because you know then the questions won't stop. The questions like, "What do you guys will manage? How will you manage?" Yeah. Um, and the fun thing is because we've been friends for so long, we had mm. answers to all of this before we ever lovely, started dating, lovely. right? And I was telling, um, I was telling him once after a training, and this mm. was several years ago. I said, 
um, you know, who disabled people want to, they would throw two blind friends from the community. And I said, they wanted to be together. And people mm-hmm. were like, how would you do it? Like, how would you? Um, so his response was, and they were doing it, it's just upset. Right? <laughs> 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 wow! So, I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. Well. Uh, yes. But that's that's really how uh, things work, Shweta. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, how's and, been the negotiation? Oh, sorry, you have another question. No, I don't. I'm. I mean, was it the question per se? It was just like a statement. I want to add that because I mean, we've spoken about this multiple times, but because especially in India, the 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 role of a wife is. is uh, more sort of uh, like a caretaker you know or a caregiver whatever the right term is mm-hmm. and she's supposed to do things for the husband do things for the house uh, it's it's more so difficult for people like these able able bodied people or non disabled people to imagine that oh my god she cannot take care of someone in the most regular sense so why is this person accepting her and mm-hmm. i just want to add like now i've moved in by myself and i am literally every day figuring out hacks to do things by myself you know which i was told at home the home that i can't do and i'm like there is a way like why do you want someone to do things the way you do it you know there can be different ways of caretaking and emotional caretaking or well-being is something that people don't even think of it is sad i mean But also shweta my question is these hmm. typical typical ideas right and that's why women with disabilities yeah, are yeah. problem of saying hmm. that women should cook Right mm-hmm. now, who mm-hmm. said that women, all women have interest in cooking? Exactly. Like who said that? Right? Who said that? Yeah. I will. I can guarantee that most foodies are interested in eating and not in cooking. I'm sorry. Most foodies are interested ah. in eating and not in yeah, cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, by the virtue of being a foodie, I would have anyway told you that I'm interested in eating and not in cooking. Mm. But also, um, I can tell you as a very empowered woman. So, mm. Shweta, these questions come back to you at some point. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, there are those days when you let the voices seep into your head. Right. right. There are those days when you really are not sure, and 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 most of the times, um, because you're surpassed that, because you have really found yourself, most of the days you're okay. But there are those that days. Very low. There day. are those days, right? So, mm-hmm. um, there will be those days, and I still remember, and and I keep telling people, you know, there's a the. my partner is my partner because of the reason mm-hmm. um the minute i told him and i remember this it was early on in our dating we didn't have much non covid dating time <laughs> but uh, i told him i want to cook for you mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and i haven't done this for anyone in years mm-hmm. <laughs> and i was like i i know how to make pasta let me make pasta for you huh. and he's like wow let's make pasta together <laughs> because for uh, him that thing that we do together Oh, right. Okay. okay like you would go on walks together. You would cook yeah. together. These are things that you do as a couple together. Yeah. And yeah. so the also the expectation is in there, right? Mm. It's not a one way thing. Even if you're empowered and there's mm. a constant expectation from your partner that you need to take care of them, mm. the minute that happens, you automatically start feeling small. Yes. Right. Right. Because it's an intimate space. Because it's a vulnerable space. Mm. And the minute he said like this, I was like. Oh wow! I never thought of it that way. And then I wondered, saying, "Why didn't I think of it that way?" I mean, I should be at least, at least I, with all my acting, exactly, to, yeah, need to think about it that way. So, was um, it uh, internalized for you that somewhere you felt like? I actually to... don't think, Shweta. Okay. I I never promised him that I would cook for you. Yes, okay. I think that was the moment that I mm. fell in love with him so much that I was like, my expression mm. of love is food. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But um, so you know, but even though I didn't come from that space, it was a pause moment, right? And that's right. when I realized why probably we fall in love with each other because we don't function in the way the the, the you know the stereotypical brackets, yeah. and we've never as friends function. That's right? lovely. So yeah. it's also been that um, mm. when we hold hands and walk, mm. we don't feel like one is assisting the others taking help. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like where a couple we are holding hands. Codependency. Why not? Right. Yeah. So it's also, um, I don't know. It's something about the framing in your own head, mm. um, that you know, and you need a partner who would work with you in this yes, non stereotypical thing. And yeah. I think that's extremely important, and that's where most women, mm. most women are pushed into gender stereotype roles, 
right and most women are with disabilities are not equal mm-hmm. because they don't fit in this very stereotypical yes i i felt that for a very long time in fact uh, what kept me going or what kept me dating him for a while is uh, he would cook at home every day and he would help his mom and i'm like oh he's not going to ask me to cook food for him every day you know so and and no and, and not in the sense of things where i didn't want to cook for him i cook i cook cook as well and i cook good food uh, but in the sense that oh so he won't expect me to cook for him every day you know so uh, that was a, a refreshing change for me because most men i know of my age uh, either order in every day or have their mothers or sisters or their whatever whoever or they they're living with cook for them so uh, and and uh, we didn't i mean for me thankfully we didn't need to discuss certain things but it was very very um, apparent that that this person respects equality in, in the relationships and would want that because i never heard him complaining about uh, having to help mom in fact one day i was like listen can you not help mom for one day and talk to me he like no 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 i have to help mom in the kitchen because because i i, I like doing that so uh, yeah it's very important and and that's how you learn sometimes you learn by observing the other person sometimes you learn with by by by, by having conversations and uh, yeah it was good for me i mean we even had those conversations uh, just to mention a detail i i have certain progressive issues with with regard to my disability uh, and uh, i i get really anxious if if uh, i need to pee you know i i get i get nervous about not being able to reach the washroom on time and i told him once you know and he's like uh, you're hot even when you're pink or even when you wet your pants i have never had someone like this to me and i just couldn't fathom it you know there's a guy who's okay with me peeing my pants who's calling me hot and who won't run away you should know uh i i he was somebody who had sort of begin his process of unlearning so uh that was that was something that kept us together uh one second something came up on my screen ah sorry yeah cool ha huh. so th- i didn't see that chota don't worry <laughs> as a fellow disabled comic i do get awkward when people <laughs> say stuff like that sorry <laughs> <laughs> that's a new beauty with it yeah, right yeah yeah but this is this is phenomenal right chata i and i am calling it phenomenal because there are such few relationship stories that we have like this. Hmm, hmm. um i think we're just being in in this call together with you i think we both have been very privileged in that space to have experienced this kind yeah. of Mm-hmm. um having this kind of dating experience uh where really to think about okay we have this issue and somehow you know the person's bringing themselves to tell you this right um you uh, if you ask anybody who knows you they'd never think about you being in your pants being and you know and like a, a, an issue that really blocks you in your head right like or right. really troubles or takes your mental uh head, basically head space right absolutely uh yeah. nobody would imagine that Hmm. and 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 if you see i've written something similar in the article that i wrote hmm. uh for the little thing and i say that covid you know dating during this whole and and covid was hard on all relationships hmm. right people living together it was hard for yeah. people living away it was hard for them and for me i don't do well in long distance relationships and hmm. i mean that concept doesn't work for me at all hmm. um and it wasn't a long distance because i i i travel to where he lives very often for work uh, and so we and it's a meeting quite often but um suddenly because of covid everything was locked down and shut down and i couldn't meet and i couldn't know and i couldn't see and i it was just you know, everybody was going gaga about oh we have the digital world and i'm like uh oh, damn I, yeah can i just abuse you guys <laughs> like there is no digital world it's like a phone call for me right it's not uh, how is it different how is it different you guys can see each other i don't see it right mm-hmm. and for me that most times that's okay Yeah. it's okay um, i know my colleagues have told you to apply a very hot lipstick so <laughs> <laughs> but if i didn't know that i would have been okay right right, right. but with a partner beyond a point in a new relationship i was i was just like but i need to be there to know mm. what you really you know mm-hmm. just know more than the words maybe i want to ask you uh, when you asked him to video call with you ah. you know i just want to know what 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 was happening in your mind you know what what prompted you to say, say that 
so i was wondering shweta ek to it was a new relationship ha huh? then we went into lockdown Huh. And I was like, but I can't see, but he can see. Why is it? Why doesn't he want to look at me? Why doesn't he want? Yeah. And yeah. I'm telling you, there are those days where such thoughts creep in, right? And COVID, when the lockdown happened, it was one of the. I think it was tough on everyone. All of my work. So I think the voices get louder, or like something happens to yeah. you. Right? And I said, why? But why doesn't he want to look at me? um and it was interesting because of that like, why doesn't one look at me and i was so frustrated i was like but now he lost me now he lost me now he lost me and he didn't ask and i was so so yeah, yeah. so annoyed and i think this whole thing about i can't see but he can see then why doesn't he want to look at me? yeah yeah i get and uh, am i not hot enough <laughs> this is stupid question right i was also dating him on yeah yeah but if you ask me rationally and logically i'd be like what is to the question yeah um but then then it came to me did you all uh, address it to verbally or uh, i told him why don't you want to look at <laughs> yeah i think i said why don't you want to do a video call with me in all my pouty voice ha, ha. i said like, why don't you want to do a video call he's like you every day you tell me how the internet is shit and you're struggling so much light is not okay your mm-hmm. webinars are not going okay why to add another layer of like now place your camera like this i can't mm-hmm. see your face why to do all that I'm like are you this is the most happy effort I'll put your call oh, why like this yeah, so yeah, yeah. i think we pretty much were trying to protect each other or like be hesitant towards each other and not verbalize and i think that tentativeness we've also gotten over or become more and more comfortable saying mm-hmm. you know let's not let's ask before us you yeah yeah uh, you but i on panelist on him and and give him like a nice uh, but but no nah. nah. okay nah. okay we don't we 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 both are very opinionated. I think two alpha males making our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> But who um, who video calls more now, Mithi? That's the question. <laughs> now we just meet. Oh, see. Oh, you <laughs> couldn't go back. I am time. so happy to see you blush. That's it. Like sure. that was my objective great, for this great. call, and I made you blush now. Thanks, so I'm sure. done. Now for also pointing that out for people who didn't notice. It's fine. Okay. You have But, such a okay. beautiful. Oh, hey, gorgeous! You have such a beautiful. No. <laughs> Everyone from no, but so also, 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 just to say that it is it it was important that it was not only about um the video call was just one thing, right? But I came mm-hmm. to a point where I just couldn't take this phone yeah. call kind of Zoom calls. Mm-hmm. I was just frustrated, and I told him. Mm-hmm. And you know the I think the COVID period really made us innovate. Hmm. and come closer in very different ways hmm. yeah closer at a distance and i think uh that's what for relationships with people with disabilities right who right, either right. of the partner can have a disability either of the partner can have an issue yeah and i think that's what's important to remember that to come to a point where you're comfortable sharing with your partner that hey this is what's happening can we either ideate together i mean i didn't even say that i said i i'm just so i'm not feeling happy or i can't see you i can't be with you Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't feel like that most days, mm-hmm. right? And I don't feel like that for all people. Mm-hmm. I'm just feeling because I'm not able to go beyond the voice. Um, mm-hmm. What's there? And I didn't have to tell him what to do. He thought of it himself, right? And next time we were on the call, he's like, "Hey, this is that you know that orange shirt that you like really yes. very much." I'm so uh, holding that, and I think that was so. And I, yeah, it didn't, it didn't register it with me till the end of the call. Exactly, yeah, but this yeah. thoughtfulness came automatically. I didn't have to find a solution, right? Mm-hmm. So it's also sometimes when your partner struggles with something, rather than saying, "Hey, it's mm-hmm. your disability, you need to find an accommodation," right? Uh, you need to make a big deal out of it. Is what yes, I'm yes. When absolutely. you have partners, you have good days and bad days, and if your yeah. partner is struggling with something, and mm-hmm. I think that's what's important to not categorize it as. This is a struggle because of your disability. You know, spelling out and making so important disability so in important. the blocks and caps is the problem, right? Yeah. That when you have a partner, you have a talkative partner. You just yeah. <laughs> find ways to talk with them, right? <laughs> But you don't tell them this is your problem. Now I will accommodate it. You don't yeah, say yeah. that. And yeah. I think that's what's wonderful about finding solutions together. Absolutely. That's what's wonderful about. Mm-hmm. Um, I I I don't know. You know, if I, if you had to climb a couple of stairs, um, you know, and if you didn't have to spell out saying, "Listen, like now you are on the second floor, I have to climb," mm-hmm. and somebody just found ways on their own, right? 
Yeah, yeah. I think that's called an understanding each other. I don't think that's called a conversation. And on the other hand, I think sometimes I'd be happy climbing a couple of stairs or even like a flight of stairs for somebody. And and at that time, I wouldn't want them to say that, oh my God, don't climb don't for me. Uh, yes. Exactly. Yes. Overprotectiveness is not yes. okay. Sir. I'm like, I want to do it for you. You know, let me do it for you. So it's about giving the other person the space to express their love in whichever way they want to. You know, I think people try to protect us a lot. Oh my God, don't make food for me. I mean, at least at least for the experiences that I have had. Oh my God, don't make food for me. Oh my God, don't go out of your way and stuff. So I think it's equally important to let the other person express themselves, you know, in the most authentic manner. Yeah. Um, Shweta, I have a question for you. Hmm. Right, we have the last 10 minutes. Right. Um, I want to know what are the quote-unquote normal experiences that you have? Right, like fights are very normal. Fights are very normal. Sorry. Uh, uh, no, I but mean, I want to ask you once again. Hmm, because people think that disabled people only have disability related experiences. Right? That this, oh, what are your relationship experience climbing a flight of stair? Right? Like being in your back. Those are the only experiences you have. This is what people would imagine. The general understanding is that in their life, mein har jaga disability gets foreground. So be it in a restaurant, be it in socializing, be it, be it in work, be, because people foreground this. Mm -hmm. So tell me some regular experiences that you had. They're very, very regular and as regular as they can get. Um, we, we were, we also start, uh, this was also uh, on the same time last year. This was slightly before the lockdown. So him not making plans. I'm like, her time make you plan banao. And him not initiating video calls. And like, like you, you don't feel like same same thing. I'm like, you don't want to see me. Why do I want to see you all the time? What's what's wrong? Aren't you interested? And uh, he has a, a public profile. So sometimes uh, random women dropping random comments and him replying to those random women. I'm like, eh, no, what what is happening? Why you replying? I mean, I wasn't that uh, mean, but uh, I mean, those very basic insecurity issues, you know, and. Uh, Somewhere it kind of came up in a conversation that, uh, I mean, it, it wasn't uh, very conscious for him, you know, but, but like, I think there was this undertone or there was this, this very, very minor understanding uh, that uh, maybe I'll have less expectations because I'm disabled. <laughs> Turns out I am a very high maintenance. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wish, son. I, I really hope my partner is not watching this. <laughs> <laughs> he never had this idea, but he always knew I was high maintenance. <laughs> no, so, and, I, and, and even if it wasn't there on his mind, I think I told him uh, a couple of times in, 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 a, in a moment of anger. I mean, listen, I might be disabled, okay, but I have regular expectations. If you can't meet them, please find somebody else. We'll be okay with your mediocre stuff because I am not <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, oh. this this really resonates, right? Having yeah. these quote unquote what's called normal experiences. And uh, we, we didn't even uh, end it because sorry to interrupt you. No, we, no. We, we, we didn't end it because of disability. We were just not compatible. Yeah. So it, it wasn't even so. Despite uh, him expect uh, accepting me completely for my disability, which nobody else has ever in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we had to cut off because some things were just not working out. So, yeah. This reminds me of one of the panels of uh, Rise of Pain. We were at an event, uh, we'd organized an event called Leap for Change um, mm. on our um, founding anniversary, not founding, um, you know, when Rise of Pain was launched. Mm. Mm. It was the anniversary of Rise of Pain. And we were in Delhi for this Leap for Change event. And I remember we were on a panel of consent and uh, one of the men, male activists had said this, um, that I ended the relationship with my girlfriend and everybody was very surprised. They were like, what, she's with you, bro. Like she's accepting you. Why do you want to now leave her? And it's like, but uh, it didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> and people were like, but come on, like you're disabled and she's non-disabled. You couldn't you have tried yeah. harder to work it out? Like, you know, you found someone finally. So I think this also yeah. pressure that you don't have the same choices as a non-disabled person is also a very interesting way to look at it because finally yeah. finally it's very real also yeah. because i had the same fear while kind of breaking up because obviously i i don't need to say it but i initiated the breakup <laughs> so, <laughs> <sorry. laughs> 
<laughs> I I thought you were going to do a call for application for your boyfriend to be in. You shouldn't say this five There's minutes before nice that. No, no, I just had some expectations, you know. Okay, so so I had this thought, and I never told him that I I don't know if I'll ever find somebody who will accept me as come as wholly and unconditionally as, as you have. And it breaks my heart to to do this because uh, I I want to feel what I have felt with you, but uh, not happening, boss. I'm sorry. So it, it it was a very mixed bag of emotions. In fact, I was on a call and then I'm like, am I doing the right thing? Shall I withdraw whatever I said? Shall I apologize? Shall I stay for long? Yeah, and, and that that thing you spoke about, the fear is so so real, you know. But uh, the one if 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 at all, God forbid, if nothing happens for some time i'll at least be okay that i have experienced something like this you know i mean and that many are low moments you do yourself not because of fear that you have again uh thank you nidhi for saying <laughs> i'm there in those moments i'm there i'll tell you some very pathetic mistakes that i've done and fears that i've had and i think that'll make you feel better but that's the next awesome. time i want a reality check i know whom to call like nidhi shoot <laughs> i need a reality check right now <laughs> but that's that's not for facebook like huh that's a private conversation absolutely over some <laughs> and maybe uh, when covid restrictions are lifted over, over some beer as well so for sure i'll have my coke you have beer okay 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 but uh, <laughs> tell me um tell me something around um did your family and friends know when you were in a relationship or around your relationship i you know you told about when you were trying to find i had the same question for you also i mean mm-hmm. regards to the reaction from your family and friends so i'll just wrap up my answer quickly because it doesn't matter anymore <laughs> uh, oh family didn't know uh, i'm really hoping my mom is not watching this live i've i've made my prayers before this video call okay uh, so that uh, friends knew and friends were happy that so uh, all my life i've chased men who are uh, i'm trying not to use the word assholes but whatever so they were just sure. happy that i'm finally with someone who is respecting me and and accepting me uh, unconditionally you know and uh, who's just uh, as real as it can be so they mm-hmm. were happy and and i i think i have uh, i i i touched wood i have really good friends so none of them told me that hey why are you breaking up with him because uh, you know oh my god what if you don't find they're like yeah i mean i and i kind of knew which friends were going to give me this response so i didn't talk to them about it at all so they were like okay you're not get, get, getting along fine break up but uh, do do what suits you the best you know so i I've, I've re- i really have good friends i think uh, fantastic coping if you if you know someone can react negatively or bring more I'm sorry my- I'm saying a fantastic coping tip. If you uh-huh. know someone is going to bring a very negative reaction, yeah, um, or reinforce stigma in your life, I think yeah. not informing them is the best. Exactly, tip. absolutely, it works well because then they send send you on a different uh, guilt trip, you know, uh, all together. Right. So, right. I, and right. I didn't want that for myself because I was already feeling vulnerable. Right. Yeah. Right. Tell right. me about you in terms of. Uh, just uh, the two of you coming to get more transitioning from being friends to fiance and then obviously you're going to get married now so a- anything that you want to share with regards to your family or your friends that has stood out for you in the last few months i think everything went um su- not surprisingly maybe everything went smoothly i think people are pitying him not because of his age but they're like ha ha you're stuck with her <laughs> she's so strong <laughs> to make you make the cup of coffee every morning what are you doing <laughs> yeah. i think uh, it's it's really um it 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 can be as quote unquote um no i don't even want to put it in quotes i think it's it, it's as usual as before that that's right? lovely mm-hmm. so i think that really has and if if someone has had a problem not my friends and family but mm-hmm. if someone else had a problem you know it's covid and you don't speak to people and they don't come to your wedding <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow no i'm joking uh. <laughs> so, um it just say that you know it, like I, and i don't want to i i don't want to say that if you're 35 you're not vulnerable mm-hmm. but i do want to say that we when you've been an activist for 10 years mm-hmm. um people do have a certain if not respect for you Right. Mm, fair. So if they don't, but it's also whose voice can you easily hear? Right. Who mm. can you really make feel make them feel bad? So you they can't make me feel bad. 
as yeah. much, right? Yeah. Um, but I really hate to say, and also, Shweta, the problem, and not the problem, like I did not um, start dating someone because they had X degrees, right? Yeah. yeah. Degrees or because they work in a particular place, et cetera, mm-hmm. right? But the minute people hear all of those things, because you remember in arranged marriages, you remember in typical, the socially accepted relationships, mm-hmm. what really works is people's profiles. Right? Okay. They're like, what yeah. is the age? What do they do? Where do they live? Do they have a house? You know, these kind of questions. Mm-hmm. And immediately when you see, oh, okay, you know, your partner, and, and, and that's when you say, oh, he's done as an MBA from Stanford. And then people stop asking because we are so colonized in our minds that the minute you know somebody's been to Vilayat, yeah. it's oh that, my God. right? I love that term you use right now. It's like exactly Vilayat. Yeah, and because it's the Dilwale Dulan ya le jayenge wala tone, right? It's Vilayat se hai. So it's the minute it's like Vilayat. It's like Vilayat. It's like Vilayat. It's foreign land. Foreign land. Right. How does that ensure compatibility? I just Who want to... Who cares about compatibility? I'm just trying to say that we hear all of these in social structures mm-hmm. put you in a power relationship. Mm-hmm. Right? I would have loved to see a couple and I think the experiences of someone who's not an activist. Right? Who's yeah. not loud, proud, and passionate. Mm-hmm. Whose partner probably has not gone to one of the Ivy League schools. Right? Yes, yes, yes. who's not a successful mm-hmm. activist who doesn't whose partner doesn't work in a carpet like it's there's so many typical and i'm listing them it's not to tell um he's in my bios but really to say that these are the kinds of markers we need for accepting right. people mm-hmm. so we have a very um stereotypical capitalistic colonized way of thinking wow. around who's acceptable and I think that kind of value and that really this kind of these kind of labels, right? Or these kind of frameworks de- devaluate people with disabilities. Um, if you look at most women with disabilities in the country even today, mm-hmm. um, in India and South Asia, globally, mm-hmm. uh, women with disabilities have fewer opportunities. Yeah. Right? You and I are very, very fortunate that very we're educated, we speak English, we're living in cities, uh, we have the choices or we have the articulation which we can say hey we don't have a choice how can you take away our choice right yeah. mm-hmm. uh, we have the uh, possibilities to say that you violated either my consent or my wish or the way i wanted to mm-hmm. there are so many women with disabilities for whom this language does not exist this possibility mm-hmm. does not exist and i think um it's important for us um that we acknowledge that in social structures mm-hmm. we need to open up for women with disabilities who may not be at the same access and privilege that we are um, And that's what that's what really matters. That's what mm-hmm. the Still Will Be Adair campaign is all about. Mm-hmm. To open up uh, minds, to really have these conversations, to have the dialogues, mm-hmm. um, even if it means that people who are okay being vulnerable speak up about it. At mm-hmm. no stage in life, no matter how strong you are, it's not easy to do, first of all, yeah. right? Uh, it's not easy to be vulnerable. It's not easy to put your story out there for like the world to comment on, mm-hmm. right? It's not easy for you to just share moments that didn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, but by accessing people who are willing and able mm-hmm. to do this, we want to bring a social change where we want spaces to open up, conversations to open up mm-hmm. um, for women with disabilities, for women living at different intersections for people who are vulnerable, Mm -hmm. people who don't fit neatly into boxes, Mm -hmm. um, and for people who just want to be who they are and let, you know, and and really have this one request for the world to accept them the way they are, to empathize with them and not to be with them. With this, I think I want to just come to you for any final comments that you have. uh, We're a few minutes over time. Uh, but I would like to hear like a closing thing um, for two two people, mm-hmm. and I don't want to make it like a message, but from your experience, if you wanted to share anything or or add anything for other women with disabilities who are hoping to find love or are very afraid to fall in love or have fallen in love and and, and feel really vulnerable. So any message for women with disabilities out there, uh, and anything for the world out there that engages with women with disabilities and comments from you <laughs> okay I, I start with the world uh, i just want to say that if if you 
if you watched our live and you've been a part of this conversation you know that uh, our our uh, respective relationships have had their most regular aspects you know and uh, they're no different from any other relationships uh, like like every relationship we'll have our challenges but that doesn't take away uh, the what do you say the mundane aspect of it and that's what makes us uh, um, experience itself in its in its whole glory and i'd want people to sort of uh, look at relationships of people with disabilities from that lens uh, if if that makes sense uh, you know so that point number 1 uh, i i did, i don't want to go into the entire uh, thing of no very equal no talk to us you know treat us equally of course to that don't but, but also don't be a jerk you better not <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh and uh, please do not uh, call somebody inspiring or a rock star on on a date uh, when you go out to them that for sure uh, and with regards to women with disabilities i think you mentioned uh, uh some time back uh, you you use the term uh, being vulnerable you know like like everybody needs to be vulnerable and needs to sort of uh, be okay with with sharing their voice and putting out their emotions into the world Uh, and i think for me uh, as a woman with uh, disability it's been a journey uh, from from telling myself that i am not worthy that my opinions do not matter my needs don't matter my story doesn't matter to kind of claiming my space and just putting stuff out there regardless of how many people choose to unfollow me how many people choose to call me out for it how many people ask me to mellow down on my voice you know i'm still uh quite determined to to keep keep talking about things that matter the most to me i think it's very important for women with disabilities to feel that their voice matters and i'm not saying this only in 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 respect of love like everything you know you don't want to go out with a friend because that space is inaccessible tell that friend you know don't overcompensate don't put yourself in a uh, in a spot by doing something you don't want to you know you don't want to take up a course that your family member is asking you to say no you know tell them what you want to do and if you don't don't want to to date somebody i mean i have experienced this in in the arranged marriage uh, market where i have been told to marry someone just because their uh, degree is the same as mine and they're like oh my god is still finding someone no please please believe in yourself enough and tell people that you don't want to be with someone because you don't like them So you don't get 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 along and have faith that you you will survive with or without a relationship you know i think that's where i have come to in my life and i'd want women to at least start uh being on that journey for themselves that's beautiful shweta and i i can i just resonate with everything that you said um and people really for me the message to society would be just give a chill pill um, yeah you know really women with disabilities or women retired of <laughs> disabilities their dreams desires ambitions yeah all that they have a voice let's just come to that and leave it and i think the sooner we accept that they have a voice the sooner we create space for the voices right um and not suppress them right yeah. so knowing that they have a voice and suppressing them still actively are two different things and we need to work on both but we need to recognize and give space um and within that voice the choice consent um dreams everything come in in the whole space of, of just letting their voice be um how about creating an evening and mornings and it's not just a double lot of the united nations document but how about working on making social structures and it's is not about infrastructure it is not about building a bank to then create um uh, having other accommodation for mm-hmm. universal accessibility how about building social structures which are more yeah so the minute you have a parent teacher meeting for example in school and you see one disabled parent don't freak out right mm. it's that's called having an enabling environment in a social right. structure mm-hmm. so really don't freak out it's it's yeah. we are there we're all a part of society and don't shoot your in, child when they ask about the person on a wheelchair like tell them what it is Right. and don't say auntie ko problem <laughs> <laughs> don't say auntie problem kaha chalega theek hai auntie mat bolo me i'm okay i find i i find it cute when people call me auntie no, i am very happy that i look 
okay so please no, listen i love because i'm the youngest in the family i've always felt very grown up when someone calls me auntie of course a kid not like a 40 year old man yeah. they call me auntie but like kids calling me auntie is really adorable so it, that's fine but don't say auntie ko problem yeah exactly don't know shut up auntie will tell themselves what yeah, they... i can't be i think i'll i'll be okay talk to the child as well please. yeah so but that is another person yeah but just to say that um you know just just be okay right and just be okay and and, and as cliche as it sounds live and let live and for all the women with disabilities there mm-hmm. um as someone you know being in a relationship now but who's been not in a relationship for a very long time who's been speaking about love disability romance um sexuality working on sexuality gender disability right mm-hmm. and having these discourses at the national level global level um from spaces in academia to activism to social spaces to mass awareness to cinema to art everywhere i can tell you that it's important to know who you are and what you want mm. rather than who the world wants you to be right right it's we may really want a relationship we may not have it and it's okay to say that i i wanted to be in a good relationship but don't be in a relationship that the world thinks you should be in mm. um and that's really important that that will be sort of a situation which will be worse than whatever right yeah. uh whatever is the worst scenario that you think could yeah. be it would be worse than that. um so really 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 um uh, work slowly you're fantastic you're amazing you're on ways and i can say it because i'm a disabled woman and yeah. you guys can say oh you're so amazing <laughs> <laughs> You are, but, you're, but, but you're amazing in your own way um you have your own strengths you have your own vulnerabilities um as much as you love your strengths you love your vulnerabilities do be okay with it as well and as soon as the voices take over go to the voices that would support you stand up again yeah yeah okay. with this we come to an end um do read our dilwal pyar gar uh, the narratives written by four women with disabilities this year and by uh, and, and by several women with disabilities last year as well um we at rising flame have collaborated with love matters for the month of february with valentine's day bringing some conversations around love desire disability intimacy and gender to present to you in this unique campaign called dil dil pyar pyar a months long campaign which is now this year come to its conclusion with four solid narratives or women with disabilities having diverse experiences living with diverse conditions showcasing their struggles their vulnerabilities but also their joys their learnings their growth and most importantly as shweta said the journey of love and self love thank you so much for joining us on this live thank you so much shweta it was incredible having a conversation with you um if we've missed your question while we were <laughs> um chatting here we will try and respond on um at the rising flames facebook page whether you could also please go and respond if there are yes. any more questions yep. um keep writing keep engaging do follow rising flame um on twitter instagram and on facebook we are at rising flame now on twitter and facebook as well so see you around and uh stay safe Bye guys thank you so much Thank you for watching Please do like share and subscribe and click the bell button for updates Follow us on Facebook Twitter and Instagram or visit our website to know more about our work Links in the description Note find the links to the essays from our campaign Dil Will Pyar Vyar in the description